Dr. Birol, thank you very much for being with us today. Could you tell me a little bit about the World Energy Outlook and how it began and what the impetus was for it? Uh, energy business is a long lead time business. When you make an investment, when you take a decision in the energy sector, it has far-reaching uh, implications uh, for the future. If you are an investor, if you build a, a coal-fired power plant, it will be with you 40, 50 years. You need coal for that, so you have to, need to, you have to, need to know about the coal prices. You have to leave it as carbon dioxide emissions. And if you build a nuclear power plant, it is a 50, 60 years of a lifetime. Or if you buy a car, uh, it will be with you uh, five to 10 years of time. So you have to see your future. So therefore, uh, the many governments, as well as the industries, energy industries, but the consumers as well, wanted to know what is waiting for them in the future. And this was the main motivation for the International Energy Agency, early 1990s, to make the World Energy Outlook. You've been publishing the World Energy Outlook for some years now. How successful have your predictions been? And has your methodology changed? We have been publishing as agency, World Energy Outlook, since 1990s. But in the last 10 years, it changed its nature uh, a bit. In the beginning, we were just making projections for the future, the, the amount of uh, oil consumption, carbon dioxide emissions, uh, electricity demand, and so on. But now, since 10 years or so, we are also discussing the implications of those projections. What does it mean for the governments? What does it mean for industry? And what does it mean uh, the, for the consumers, people who buy cars, people who buy uh, uh, personal computers, people who buy uh, refrigerators, try to make it much more policy oriented rather than only or mainly a statistical uh, uh, work. How successful we were, it is of course up to our readers uh, uh, to decide, but I can give you uh, two different angles perhaps here. The first one is we were able to identify a couple of uh, trends. For example, the rise of China in the energy sector, which is a major, uh, I think, uh, issue. The second one is we were able to highlight how climate change will be important for the energy sector and what are the implications of that. And uh, very recently, uh, at the end of uh, 2008, when the oil prices were uh, falling down, we were uh, saying that uh, they may fall down now, but we will see towards the end of the year uh, higher prices, which is the case now. So we were able to identify major trends, which, has, which were a surprise for many in a time limit. This is one. The second, perhaps, as a success, if it is another criteria, uh, to our knowledge, World Energy Outlook is the best-selling energy book in the world, which I think is an important uh, factor uh, to notice. Nuclear energy is one energy form that emits virtually no greenhouse gases. What stands in the way of its being used more widely, and how can these obstacles be dealt with? Uh, when we look at the future of the uh, global energy system, I see, as highlighted in the uh, World Energy Outlook, three major challenges. The first one is the uh, security of energy supply. Our oil and gas production in the future will be made more and more uh, by a limited number of countries. For example, if you look at natural gas, a major source for electricity generation, about half of the natural gas reserves are in two countries, concentrated in two countries only, namely Russia plus Iran. The second one is climate change, to produce electricity with minimum carbon dioxide emissions. And the third one, which is, I think is an important one as well, today in the world, 1.5 billion people, 1.5 billion people, have no access to electricity. Mainly in Sub-Saharan Africa and in India. They have never seen light in their lives. They, have, they cannot put uh, their medication in the refrigerator uh, for their children. So when we look at this, all these three issues, I think nuclear energy provides a positive answer in all these three issues. Nuclear energy can produce electricity in a secure format, and you have less dependence on the uh, gas uh, exporting countries. It doesn't emit uh, carbon dioxide emissions. And third, it provides electricity uh, in a, a, a cheap and in a safe way to many. 
Of course, uh, I understand that in many countries there are some hesitations, especially in terms of the uh, accidents we, we have seen in the past in Chernobyl, Three Mile, Three Miles Island, and and the others. That there are some psychological, at least, resistance to nuclear energy, which is understandable. So, uh, uh, and I believe that it is up to governments uh, to uh, inform uh, their people the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, nuclear power, and it is up to the people to decide. While I believe that the nuclear energy is a very important uh, energy source to make use of, I do not believe that the governments should go for nuclear energy despite their people's decision. It's been said that there's no such thing as clean coal. And if that's the case, why doesn't the IEA come out against any use of coal? I think uh, we should look at the energy issues from a, a holistic picture. Uh, we have a couple of uh, duties today, a couple of tasks. One of them is to improve energy security. A second one is uh, to uh, find a solution to uh, climate change. And the third one is bringing electricity to everybody, not only to the rich people. Uh, today, let me take India as an example today. India uses a lot of coal, coal-fired power plants. And today, in India, 500 million people, as big as Europe, uh, they have no electricity. And it will be rather wrong to tell the Indians, in the absence of any assistance to Indians, to tell them, no, you cannot use coal because we have a carbon dioxide emission problem. So if you want to find a solution to the climate change, I think on one hand, we have to provide assistance to developing countries to go more clean energy uh, 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 generation technologies. On the other hand, try to find solutions to use coal in a more efficient and cleaner manner. In that respect, I can uh, mention the uh, carbon capture and storage is a technology which could provide a good solution to use coal in an environmentally friendly way. Uh, however, it's a promising technology. It is not yet there, but we as the International Energy Agency is working, we are working very hard in order to uh, improve uh, the use of uh, carbon capture and storage and find solutions that the uh, CCS technologies, carbon, car carbon capture and storage technologies, uh, have and may have uh, in the future. So, to look at the general picture, I think we cannot uh, exclude coal from our energy mix for the time being. While we uh, use coal, uh, especially in developing countries, at the same time we have to work hard in order to find ways to use coal in an environmentally friendly manner.